Okay, so you might have problems that you need to simplify before you can graph them that are compound inequalities. I'd like you to write this example down on the paper you're going to do your work on. Yes, this is 3-6. What do you notice about this inequality that you think probably needs to change? Why the plus one? Because it ruins it. It ruins it? <laughs> is the x by itself? No. The x is with the plus one, which is why you guys noticed it. So we have to take the plus one away from all of the parts of the inequality. Negative 5 and negative 1 is going to give us negative 6. Is less than x, which is less than 1. Then to graph this, this is going to go back to what you guys were just doing in the video. We're just going to do a quick snapshot of the graph and show negative 6 and positive 1. Am I going to circle them both and fill them in or circle them both and leave them open? Circle both and leave them open. Okay. Now here's the weird thing about this. Remember how we talk about in inequalities order matters? Because if you have the variable on the left side, it tells you which direction the arrow goes. Yeah. But with an and compound inequality, with that x in the middle, this one on the left needs to be flip-flopped. Because what this is really saying is x, if I flip-flop this less than, it's going to become a greater than. Mm -hmm. And x is also less than 1. Oh, that's how we get it. So what direction is the arrow going to go from the, the 6, negative 6, to the right? Mm -hmm. And it's going to go to the left from the zero or the one so we're going to end up with just the line in between <coughs> let's do another and one that's a little bit more complex eight is less than three <coughs> x minus one which is less than or equal to eleven first thing we have to do is simplify this by simplifying, we mean we need to get the x alone. It cannot be with any numbers inside this inequality. <clears throat> First, I'm going to add the 1, though. I heard somebody say divide by 3, and that's true, because right now the x is being multiplied by the 3. But I always like to save the division for the end. Wait, don't we add one subtracting? Oops, thank you. I added it for the other Good two. I just job, messed Richie. up there. Good catch. And this is the reason I like to save the division for last. Often the numbers are going to be friendlier. If I did 8 divided by 3, that would have been kind of messy. But 8 plus 1 is 9. 9. And 9 is going to divide by 3 a lot easier, right? 9 is now less than 3x, <laughs> which is less than or equal to 12. And then we're going to divide L3 sections by 3. All to get that x by itself. 9 divided by 3 is? 3. <clears throat> 3 divided by 3 is 1, leaving us with an a visible 1 in the x. So x. And less than or equal four. to 4. four. <laughs> you don't have to do this, but I'm a very visual person. I am so used to graphing with the inequality symbol helping me find which direction my arrow goes. I like to take these ands and rewrite it as x is greater than 3 and x is less than or equal to 4. And that way when I graph, I have my inequalities in the right place for the symbols to help me with the direction of the graph. Does that make sense, you guys? Yeah. 
Yes, ma'am. You do you have to do that? No. If you can look at this and see what direction the arrow goes with that X in the middle, don't take this extra step. But I will tell you as your math teacher who's been teaching algebra for five or six years, I always do this. Because I know myself. I'm visual and it just helps me see it better. Three, four, which one gets circled with an open? Three. Which one gets circled with a closed? Four. And where does the direction go? Okay. Together. Yeah, Who's feeling okay? Like you see all the steps, but you at least know what to do, even though they look like they're kind of long and complicated. Yeah. Thumbs. Yeah, Let good. me see it. Because if I see thumbs sideways and iffy, then that means you're ready to practice, right? Let's do some oars though first. Yes. You want to see my scratch paper? Sure. Uh oh, is it somebody's grade report? It's mine. <laughs> I thought you got that out of. Oh no, my thing's empty. I'm out of scratch paper. Okay, let's try a couple of problems that are oars. Please write down 8 plus y is greater than or equal to 7, or 8 plus y is less than 2. Okay, there's different things I like about the ands and the ors, and there's things about them that kind of drive me crazy. With the ands, I don't like that for myself I need to visually redo this, but I do like that I'm doing the same thing all the way across and it's all in one big inequality. The ors, we, it's kind of like absolute values, we have two of them, and you have to do them separately, and then they're going to basically use the same number line. What do I need to do here? Subtract, Subtract the 8. And y is going to be greater than or equal to negative 1. Or I need to subtract the 8 over here. That's the thing that bugs me about it. I have to do it like four times instead of just three. y is less than negative 6. One of the things I like about the ors, these are now in the right order. I don't have to flip flop anything. I'm just going to put those two things on the same number line. So I always look at my numbers and decide which number is going to be further to the right and which number is going to be further to the left. Six. What's going to be further to the left? Negative six. Negative six. Further to the right? Negative one. Negative one gets circled and filled in. And what direction does it go? Right. Y is less than negative six. Mm -hmm. Open circle and goes to the left. And it's done. <laughs> Questions now. All around the world. Okay, so again, our practice, as you guys found, it's not very many problems, but they're problems just like these. It is on page 208. And again, the numbers are 3 through 10 and 16 to 23.